Hi, Libra. Happy birthday. Happy October. Happy Halloween. How are we doing? I am... Uh, no, I have to. I have to change this candle. If I have one more thing go wrong, <laughs> I'm just going to like go ham, lose my mind. So, yes, let's replace this tea light because if I don't have something... If something else goes wrong, I just, I cannot stand it. So I, um, this is like the third or fourth reading I'm doing for you this morning. Um, I did this reading and it got lost in the transfer, like deleted while I was transferring. I screamed, I cried, I took a nap, but I am back. Okay. Whew. That feels good. <laughs> My candle is lit. We are good to go. I didn't want to check this reading because um, even though the previous file deleted, you won't get to see like the reveal part of the reading to me is being surprised at the cards that turn over, but that's okay. I don't want to check this reading because this is a good reading and I'm in a good mood. I'm a Libra and I want to spread the good, new the good mood to you guys. So your... Um, Oracle cards are the cauldron and barmbrack. The cauldron says synergy and healing and barmbrack says sweetness and synergy. So this is all about synergy. Synergy is um, elements sort of fusing together at the right time, right place. When we have the cauldron, the cauldron is about putting different elements into your pot, into your cauldron. Very witchy. If you are a witch, um, then this is the perfect oracle card for you, right? But this is about putting all of your elements into the pot, into the mixing bowl, stirring them together, putting them into the oven. And then after you have done all that, then you take it out and you have this baked bread. Now, I didn't know what barm brack is. I got it in another reading and I didn't know what it was until... Um, that other reading, but it's kind of like a king's cake. If you're familiar with Mardi Gras, um, on Fat Tuesday, um, those who celebrate Mardi Gras bake a cake and they'll hide a baby inside, like a little baby figurine inside. And you share the cake with uh, members of the community, with your friends, with your family, and whoever gets the baby, it's like good luck or something, right? Barmbrack is similar, I guess. Um, some traditions do it during Halloween time and they put a pea, a coin, a stick, um, a cloth, and maybe something else. But each little oracle, little charm, um, represents something different. So like the pea represents bad luck, the coin represents, um, you know, good money coming your way. I think a ring um, you can put a ring in there and that obviously means marriage. But what I got from this, um, one, with the cauldron, synergy and healing, some of you are still going through the healing process. I know I'm still healing a little bit. Um, I'm feeling really, really good, but I know, you know, um, there's still maybe a little bit more work I have to do. Um, so um, we have gone through it. I have been there. I totally understand. But um, I think we are coming to a good place. And I just got so excited with this reading because I feel like with the Barmbrack card, it's like so many surprises are in store for you. Like you just don't even know. <laughs> like not even um, birthday surprises, right? But just like, I feel like the universe is conspiring with you. Like they're working behind the scenes to bake this bread basically and give you like so many treasures and ah, I'm excited because I'm a Libra. So obviously I want those treasures, but I'm excited for you too because I want us to come out of this funk and come out of this um, like stroke of bad luck, I guess. So anyway, let's start with the where you are currently we have the star reversed you could be dealing with an, an Aquarius but the star is a card about wishes and um, it, again it is a card about healing so I feel like if you are getting frustrated that your wishes aren't here yet um, part of that is healing your heart so you need to work on 
um, healing your heart to be receptive to love energy. But the star is a card about frequency, like radiating on the right vibration to will our wishes into like basically attract our wishes, right? This is about magnetism. The lovers often is about magnetism to me, like, um, two different elements being pulled together. And it's a lot like cooking and baking, right? Um, putting different elements into this cauldron and being like melded together to have this, um, sweet outcome, right? <laughs> but the star reverse, this is a card about losing faith, losing hope. Um, but every time I see the star, I always have to say your wishes are going to come true. They are in focus. They're just not, or they are going to come true. They're just not in focus right now. And I got on this whole thing, my last reading, it got deleted, where I talked about how the star is ruled by Aquarius. Aquarius is another air sign. Air sign. So let's think about air um, radio waves. So the star Uranus or Aquarius is ruled by Uranus often deals with technology and frequency. So when we talk about radio waves, those are waves in the air, right? Um, so the star, whenever it's reversed, it's kind of like being like one decimal off of the radio station we need to turn into. So, um, it's like we need to adjust our frequency so that we can hear the music. Judgment usually depicts Archangel Ma Michael coming down from the heavens and he's blowing his horn and he says, do you want to stay in this mess or do you want to ascend up to heaven with me? And so when I see the judgment card, I often say, listen to the music that is um, being played, like listen to the music on the radio, right? And that spirit giving you message to heed this calling. Um, but with the star, it's like you are just like a decimal shy of being in alignment with your wishes, right? So don't lose hope, don't lose faith. And part of being in alignment is to do this healing and be open to love and believe that it's for you. We have it crossed by the seven of imps, the seven of imps in this deck. It's like the seven of wands. And that's a card about standing up for yourself and um, defending your beliefs, defending what is right for you. So with this hopelessness, with this lack of faith, my sense was that any of you who are stuck in the healing process, um, it's a matter of defending what your destiny, what destiny holds for you, right? Like taking ownership of your destiny because like I said when the star is here this is your destiny this is your wish this is meant to be it's just usually like because it's the star it's like the stars have not aligned yet right it's all about divine timing like the perfect moment and part of accelerating that divine timing is for us as Libras to not get in this mindset of um, I'm unlovable, no one will ever love me, or, um, you know, um, in the last reading, I got a message, um, I didn't go to college, so I can't get my dream job, right? It's not about, like, we don't want those self-defeating thoughts in our headspace. This is about claiming what is ours, because we have to acknowledge that this is part of our destiny and we have to sort of claim our destiny, right? We have to take ownership of our destiny. We have to stand up for our destiny. We have to believe that we deserve it and that it is ours, right? We have to like own it. So in our thoughts, we have the sun card. Um, the sun is the happiest card in the deck. It can talk about children, um, but mainly it's just joy, happiness, good times. Um, best card in the deck. And... Um, this could also just speak of your solar return because we have birthdays, right? Um, so this is just sitting pretty and um, like sitting in the sunshine, right? Sitting in all of the good things 
that are around us, um, sitting in all of the gifts that may be coming our way, all of the celebrations we might be taking part in. And I also want to say that um, I've been telling all the signs whenever the sun has shown up that um, it reminds me, uh, this card in this particular deck reminds me of the computer game Plants vs. Zombies where you have to um, plant like sunflowers and stuff in your front yard because you get like a zombie attack and the zombies will eat the flowers. And so while they're eating the flowers, you can like distract them and like kill them. You plant um, sunflowers so that they can eat and then you plant, um, this looks like eggplant or something, but in the game you plant squash and they stomp on the zombies. <laughs> and I think zombies because we have these skulls here, right? But it's, um, I'm getting a sense of um, being prepared with this sun card um, for any sort of attack, right? Like lining your front yard with sunshine, basically. Sunflower is of the sun, right? Lining it with this positivity, like setting up a fence, basically a boundary of positivity so that any sort of zombies that try to roll through your house and eat your brains um, are going to be thwarted by um, just so much light and uh, positivity, right? So um, sort of like building a fortress around yourself of hope and faith and positivity. But again, it's about claiming what is rightfully yours, the destiny that is rightfully yours. In the past, we have the lovers. And um, so you could be dealing with a Gemini. I see um, Gemini, Leo, Aquarius, and this is Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Um, but let's continue. So in the past, there was a divine connection. There was, um, whenever we are in a romantic relationship, there is this magnetic pull that is inexplainable, right? We don't often choose who we love. Like we just love them <laughs> and there's a connection and the lovers with the star and the sun, it's like, this is a union that was meant to be. This is a union that is meant to be. In this particular deck, we see Dracula swooping in on a woman who, um, it looks like is reading his love letters, you know, and he, um, you know, vampirism, it's kind of like lustful, right? But I get it's deeper than lust. Like it is this like love, this like magnetic, um, it's corny, but Edward Cullen of Twilight, right? <laughs> like, um, he could resist all those girls, but when Bella came along, he like needed her blood, right? It's like those lovers were meant to be. Oh, and I got a sweet message too, um, from the last reading that, um, this love is like immortal, right? <laughs> because we have the vampires of, um, who are immortal. And then whenever they bite you, you turn immortal too. So it's like Bella and Edward's connection could, um, like it would not be immortal unless Edward bit Bella, right? Like eventually, like if Bella stayed a human and Edward was a vampire, then eventually, um, their paths would diverge. But um, it's like they aligned to their destiny and part of their destiny was to be immortal together, right? To be, um, in love together and part of your destiny and part of your, this divine partnership, right? Um, so none of this talk about, I don't deserve love or, you know, men only use me for sex or anything like that. It's like, no, this is part of your story. This is part of your life story. This is part of your destiny. And this is part, this is like a story that will be immortal. Like love stories are immortal, right? Like your children will read these like love letters. Um, whenever you pass away or like your grandchildren will find these love letters, right? So it'll like it's a love that like lives on after death that lives on. Um, and I'm just like feeling like epic love story. It's amazing. I, 
<laughs> I feel so good about this reading. Um, but this could be a partner that you are currently with. This could be um, someone that you are reconnecting with because we do have the judgment card here. But it can also be that you're single, single, single as a dollar bill. And this is about tuning into your frequency and finding that like great lover um, t that's like the story of the ages. But um, uh, I also want to say, um, I didn't get this in the last reading, but I see this dog right here and it's like, this is a loyal love. Like, if you guys are separated, they feel you. I was saying that in the last reading. Like, you guys miss each other. I'll get to all of that later. Let's continue, Lauren. Okay. So, in the foundation, we have two Dracula figures here. We have, um, in the Judgment card, there is a Dracula figure who is bringing people up from the dead, right? And, um... The judgment card talks about a calling, like answering the call. You could get a call from um, a lover from the past or um, from, you know, a connection that you are losing hope on, right? But this is, um, man, I got some good messages that I feel like are getting lost now. Okay, let's look at it. Let's look at it. We have Awaken, Sleeper, and Rise. Okay, so you're rising to your destiny, right? You are rising to the occasion. Like, this is coming out of this, like, grave. Like, some of you may be thinking or may have felt like, I'm just going to give up on love. It's not for me. I'm unlucky in love. Like, what's the point? What is the fucking point? Sorry for the language. Um, but it's like this person, because there's so much magnetism, right? Because there's so much love, because there's just, it's just so faded. It's like this person pulls you out of that, right? He pulls you out of bed. He pulls you out of the grave, right? <laughs> um, ah, I love it. So, um, but judgment can be... Um, reconciling, um, forgiving, um, if you are separated from your partner or if you are with them, this can just mean like transforming old arguments into like power tools for your relationship, right? Um, bringing something back up from the dead. Um... But yes, because, I mean, we don't see any horns here, but because I always have to say it, um, judgment is about taking heed of those signs that our spirit guides, our angels, our ancestors give us, and answering the call, because he does blow his horn. And I was talking about the frequency of radio stations, so really be mindful about the music that you're hearing. That's going to give you a lot of clues. But I feel like this is a love that's like to bring you out of the darkness, right? Um, and into the sun. I love it. Um, I also want to say that judgment is, you know, it is about the rapture. So it's like there's heaven and hell on earth. Um there's human suffering. People are jerks. I'm a jerk. You're a jerk sometimes, right? Um, and these people, I mean, they're maybe supposed to be mummies, but they have, they're wrapped in bandages, right? So this is like wounding, right? This is people wounded on earth. Um, there can be heaven on earth. There can be hell on earth. But this is about leaving the hell on earth behind and rising up to the heaven, like elevating ourselves, um, reaching this higher sense of hopefulness, joy, and positivity, right? Seeing the heaven on earth and, um, sort of 
I'm just seeing like these bandages and thinking wounds. Like these wounds are not going to be wounds for a long time, guys. Like it's almost over, seriously. Um, in your future, you have the Five of Bats reversed. Um, the Five of Bats is the Five of Swords. So this is coming out of conflict. If you were fighting with someone, then you guys are dropping your swords. The Five of Swords is a card about debate, right? It's um, a competition of ideas. We have one problem and five different people have solutions for that problem. So it's about reaching a compromise and finding the best solution that works for the greater good. So um, with you and your love, this is someone who um, you guys are reaching a compromise. You guys are turning your problems into solutions and um, letting go of any negative um, inner chatter that you have in your head that prohibits this connection, right? We have the, I clarified it with the Ten of Ghosts. There were the Ten of Cups reversed. The Ten of Cups is a happily ever after card. It is happy home, happy family, um, ultimate contentment, right? You have been through your highs and your lows and you've stuck it together. And if you are disconnected from your partner right now, then this is both of you missing each other. You both feel that magnetic pull and you both like long for each other you like it's like a magnet right it's like um I, I know I keep saying that but it's like we have this synergy um of like multiple elements and then like it comes out baking right so it's still baking um but the Ten of Cups reversed um, just tells me that both of you are unhappy if you are disconnected. Both of you are unhappy um, because you miss each other. But um, it's just baking, guys. It's just baking. And I think while it's baking, you are working on yourself. Underneath the deck, where is it? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Where is it? I, okay, don't get frustrated. Um, underneath the deck, there was the hermit reversed. So for some of you, you have been isolating yourself for too long. You've been single for too long, doing your own thing. Um, you have soul searched long enough and now you're isolated and weird and you do need to step out into society. <laughs> um, I am in that camp. <laughs> Um, for others of you, um, the Hermit reversed means that you have not done any soul searching. You are terrified of being alone and you need to take some time to work on yourself. The um, Three of Pentacles is a card about teamwork and um, usually shows a group of people working on a stained glass window. But in this deck, it's only one person. So that tells me that um, this is teamwork that you do on yourself behind the scenes in an effort to be part of the team whenever you reunite, right? So if you are separated from your partner or if you are single, 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 then this is an opportunity to work through these conflicts, to take ownership of what your destiny is, part of which um, is love, is divine love, is a love of the ages, right? Um, so... You're working on that right now. And um, for those of you who um, are afraid to be alone, who are serial monogamous or anything like that, then um, this is an opportunity for you to um, see your self-worth and to, um, like, regardless of if you are in Camp 1 or Camp 2, um, this is a time about working on yourself so that you can be the best partner for, um, this divine love, right? So that you can be ready for this divine love. And again, you are baking, right? You are healing, you are baking, and there are a lot of surprises in store for you. The Queen of Ghosts or the Queen of Cups is a Cancer Scorpio Pisces. It can be male or female, but this is someone who is very sweet, very tender. Um, she's very intuitive, like I said. 
um, she can sense um, things. So I feel like part of this magnetism is um, you guys can like sense each other at night and um, like feel each other, right? Um, you can, uh, like some of you may be experiencing like astral projection or something. But the Queen of Ghosts, um, she is uh, very loving and um, a compassionate person person. Um, so whoever this love is, um, this is someone who is very sweet for you and, um, very tender and will nurture your heart and, um, give it the care that it needs. But the most important thing for you is to work on being your best self and to, um, rise to the occasion to take ownership of your destiny that, um, this love is meaningful, this love is powerful, and this love is meant to be. Let me know if that resonates, Libra. I love you very, very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Happy birthday!